Well, hello everyone. Brandon from Sidell Ranch. Just wanted to uh, give a new overview or a good overview of this uh, new tractor I got. So I traded in my LSXR4140 for this new version of that tractor. This is an MT342. Let me find the, there it is. So it's an MT3. 42 so that's its uh model it is hydrostatic i'm not sure what the s dash hydrostat is i wonder if that's the new linked pedal feature they have but it's hydrostatic and as you can see it's got a cab but basically what i was going to do is give you an overview of what i've noticed uh different on this new series uh tractor now Again, if anyone's familiar with the XR4140, uh, which was the model previous to this, they look a lot alike. I mean, it's not like they redesigned the whole look of the tractor, but uh, they did actually do a lot of improvements that made me pretty happy that I, I, uh, I did some review with the dealer and uh, he showed me some of the new features they did and I've even been finding some new features of my own but uh, that's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you some of the differences between this new version of this model tractor that LS is putting out. And like I said, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm pretty happy about the new things they did. So uh, let me see. So to start with, it's a new loader. This is not the loader that was on there before. Um, I don't remember the, the loader number, what it was, but this is a new model loader for this tractor. The specs are pretty close to the last loader, but they're not 100%. They're a little different. I think this one has just a slight less lifting capacity rating, um, but they're so close. Everything's pretty much um, not really noticeable. I don't think anybody would notice the difference probably on those capacities if they got this new tractor. Uh, but a couple things I noticed is, uh, so on the loader, let's start with that. Um, the smooth bucket it comes with, mine did not have uh, the pre-drilled holes, bucket edge. You could put uh, the bucket teeth attachment on that, or you could put just another smooth edge on there to keep you from wearing out your bucket. But that was noticed. I noticed that was new. Uh, they did the legs different now. The, uh, the legs on it where you take off your loader the quick disconnect uh it's got a new style leg on it that uh that's actually pretty cool it uh it has actual feet on it that was one of the problems that well it wasn't a problem with the tractor but if you didn't put that thing on some good level ground like concrete or something those legs would sink into the dirt and uh you know sometimes you would have a little bit of a trouble getting it on if uh, if those legs sink down so now they put a more robust foot on that and if you notice there's no longer those little pins that they used to have before these actually out there it goes there it goes So basically now you just, there's a spring on here, spring mechanism, and you just pull that foot up and it comes off the little cleat there and uh, goes down. So you no longer have this pin where you have to worry about losing the little cotter pins and so forth that go in it. These, uh, these just have the spring on there that hold it in. So, so I like that. I, I mean, I think that's a great little improvement on that loader and uh, I think that's going to be cool. They still have the open support tube on the tractor. So, uh, so I can still use my little homemade toolbox and, uh, they've even got some screw holes there next to it. I'm not exactly sure what those are for, but, uh, but it, at least there's still support tube there and it's open. So you can do the little homemade toolbox like I did in one of my other videos. If you guys want to check that out, but, uh, so yeah, basically the legs pop down pretty easy and uh some of the new things on the loader let's see what you'll notice too is is they've went with a smaller hydraulic line i haven't really noticed any difference in the actual use of the loader of course this is brand new and i haven't been doing much with it but uh 
they're definitely more compact and, and out of the way so i like that and uh hopefully when you know time takes a toll on these these hoses that maybe uh maybe they'll even be cheaper to replace but um but you know if you keep it in a barn something like that you probably will live throughout the tractor it's usually when they're left outside that the uv gets to them you can see the the design of it is a little different on the loader um but uh you know it, it still basic layout the same still got the level attachment for that on there uh the bucket level and let's see before i move on i think most of that's about the same uh but coming over here to the actual hydraulics of the loader these are, are pretty much the same here but what i really like on this new model is they turned the block so the hydraulic block that's down here um, under the cab that actually used to go vertical up and down and it hung down quite a ways down here i don't know if you can see my hand there it is it used to come straight up and down instead of underneath here sideways and that was something that I appreciate because the last tractor, I would get that hung up sometimes. If you're mowing in something that's uh, that's got a lot sticking up, um, things would get stuck in there or you could get, you know, it hung on something. I mean, there was a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity there for that thing to get uh, to get damaged. So I really like how they they turned that and stuck that underneath and really took about six inches there or so. Um, from it hanging down and, and putting it underneath the cab. So for me, uh, that that's gonna probably keep me from getting that hung up. Uh, so for the loader, I think that's all I can think of right now. But uh, but man, there's there's so many things they they did on this tractor. So I mean, all the way down to so here's the the front tire, front wheels and tires. They have metal valve stems in there now. Those used to be rubber valve stems, at least on mine. And um, twice I busted off those rubber valve stems and uh, had to get new stems put on. And uh, I actually bought a tool, if you have that problem with yours, I bought a tool that I could try to review sometime that shows you, uh, you can put a valve stem in the rim without taking the tire off. And I specifically bought that because I had ripped the valve stems off my um my front tire so uh i believe these metal valve stems are going to just be that much stronger and i won't have to mess with it because i've never ripped one off my rear tires and those were metal valve stems and uh this this tractor has uh the carlisle tires on it which i like better than the titans that i had on my last one now i don't know if that's uh just something new that they're doing is putting a different brand of tire on there or if they just pick whatever they can on supply um, so I'm not sure but I do like these tires better than the Titans that I had on my last tractor uh, so there's there's the tire thing on it and uh, I don't the tires aren't filled from the dealer I didn't have the tires filled but I'm gonna make a video to show you how I fill the tires with water it's uh, actually very simple and uh, watch for that video it's gonna be coming soon because I'm gonna do that to these tires um so another thing i noticed is the the handle on the cab is better i mean it, it it's different it used to actually be uh horizontal now they made this this handle vertical but one of the things i had felt was the the handles on the last tractor um I, they, I never had a problem with them breaking or anything but they they seemed a little weaker they seemed like you couldn't um really hold on to them. These are a much more substantial handle. That one's locked right now, but a uh, much more substantial handle. I do like the new handles and I do like how they did them on the inside. So again, another great improvement. They probably, uh, you know, threw that around on the design and decided to, to put that in. So again, the doors, I like that. Uh, let's see what else on the outside. Oh, mirrors. So I did have a problem on my last tractor where the I had broke couple mirrors um, they put a much stronger mirror design on here so now um, it, you know it's 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 solid there's not like a little pin that goes through it holding it on and you would know what I'm saying if you have the XR uh, 4100 series but uh, 
I've played with these mirrors just a little bit and they definitely seem sturdier and uh, I believe those are going to do me a lot better than uh, that I had on the last ones. But uh, great improvement. Uh, hats off to LS on the new mirror design. Uh, the hood and everything, they, they look about the same, but they did change the hood up. Uh, I believe that's a three-piece hood now. Um, there's, you can see kind of the, the crack and it's still metal. It's got a different hood ornament emblem in there. Uh, I think the front of this, this hood is pretty much still the same, um, as before, but you know, if it wasn't an issue, why, why I try to improve it? Uh, still got the button push down there. Um, let's see. I know on my last tractor, it had a rubber gasket here but it didn't have one here between the cab and the um the glass now my dealer ended up later adding that in because it was vibrating and making some noise but i don't know if that was standard or not but now it is and this seems to be very sturdy uh i had a i had a time where this uh one of the mounts on this part of the metal had cracked and was vibrating and it and it got welded but uh i don't think this is going to be a problem at all it seems very sturdy so so that's good um man they did do some changes on the inside of the tractor i'll get to the motor in just a little bit uh but they did do some changes inside which uh again i appreciate that they did um there were some other issues that i know they worked through with the steering that's more robust from what i'm told on this this model um Let's see, what else was it on the outside I was looking at? I know back here on the three-point, uh, they did some improvements. One, I'm not sure. Again, my XR4140 was like their first, first or second year they had it out. So some of these things um, could have been just improvements that they did along the way, even on the XR series that I had. Uh, but I didn't have a, a three-point adjustment handle back here where I could move the three point now that comes standard on this unit this one has the much stronger uh, three point adapters down here that connect into this um, that I had to get replaced on mine when it was under warranty and uh, they did put this style mount on there but that comes standard on this one this is uh, much better never had any problems with it after they fixed that um, let me see what else most of this other stuff's pretty standard. They did, uh, I believe, change this because mine was kind of a tight area to work in. This one looks looks uh, bigger. It's still got the safety guard and everything that you need, but it looks like there's more room there now. Um, what else? Oh, so now it's standard rear windshield wiper. So on mine, that was an option. I didn't get it. Um, it really wasn't a huge issue for me because I would wipe down the windows usually when I was done. But if you're, if you're mowing a lot, um, especially if you're using a three-point mower, you could probably get a lot of dirt and dust back here where just a couple swipes of that, uh, that rear wiper would probably be very good for you. Uh, but like I said, I didn't have that on my last one. It has that now. Uh, it even looks like the lights that they put on here are a little more beefed up and sturdy. Um, I had not really too much trouble and it was probably mostly my fault from getting around trees and so forth but uh I did sometimes have those go and I think one of the lights had cracked on me um but these look like they're a much beefier um base on those lights they look sturdier again like I said this may be stuff that they did even during the XR series later on but uh but my my specific oh sorry hit the mic my specific version did not uh, have that. Uh, they look like they also changed this uh, the adjustable portion of the three point. Sorry I don't know if y'all got that. But this was different on mine too. Mine was uh, didn't look that sturdy. It looks like they put a a different style adjuster on there also. Um, they put uh, better filling hose or hole or whatever you want to call that for the hydraulics um now it's nice big metal opening there that's pretty cool uh but you know the things that uh that they liked they kept and 
the things that maybe they had some issues with on the design, they changed. So it's definitely some improvement out here. And uh, I think it's great. I'm pretty grateful that they did uh, those improvements. So trying to think of anything else that they did over my XR from the outside. The standard wiper on the front was the same. But uh, you'll see some new things in the cab too. Uh, some things that I think are pretty awesome. Actually, one feature that I really like, and um, and I'm going to go ahead and show that. So, most of the stuff in here is the same um, from what I remember. You know, I let me climb up in the cab. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on because the other thing that I liked, well, I don't have the key in it, but the other thing that I liked about uh, this new one is the AC panel. I like that. So uh, it's got a different instrument panel in it too. It doesn't look different, but the lights are different than mine were. There's some new stickers that give you a little bit more information about the tractor. Uh, one of the things I noticed uh, that I'll talk about is they put a new safety switch in this uh in this tractor so now it needs to be in neutral to crank it uh before you could crank it in gear and uh you know it didn't want to it gave you a bunch of beeps and noises but now uh one of the new safety features is it has to be in neutral to crank the, the tractor so that one's going to take a little bit of getting used to but eventually it'll become second nature um so from the inside let's see this one i did not get the radio this time i had a radio installed last time i really didn't use it that much um but i think i'm going to probably put a radio in there later i'll do a video on that uh just to have one because they're pretty cheap nowadays and and why not right but uh so this one doesn't have the radio uh but it does have a new uh, AC panel which I liked very sturdy mine uh, before would kind of move around and and I actually had a couple issues of it falling out um, this one's actually nice and sturdy inside doesn't move around um, some of the people I've heard with the LS some of them would complain that when they turn their tractor off the AC wouldn't stay on that every time you turned it on and off you'd have to repress this AC button well I, I never had that issue on any of them, but on this one, uh, it always stays on. So if you leave it on, this is what it's going to come back on. So, uh, so that's great. Uh, again, there's the rear windshield wiper, which I didn't have before. So that's there and it's got, uh, you know, the water capabilities and everything. So it's not just a wiper. It's also got the spray. Um, what else? Let's see over here. You're going to see, and it's kind of hard because it's really bright outside. So let me see if I can make it change a little. So they've got much larger um, detail on this here. A lot of times, you know, you would wonder, you know, this is windshield wiper and this is windshield wiper. Of course, this is in the back. That's in the front. You know, I didn't have this issue before, but if you ever wondered about where these are, this actually illustrates now front, back. Here's the tractor, front, back beacon still got cruise control um so these features it had before in my other one so i like all of that now speaking of cruise control they've got an awesome new feature called linked pedal and uh something i would have loved to have seen earlier on my tractor but uh it's on there now on this new model and basically what it is is you set your rpm where you want your uh i guess idle idle rpm to be so like in my case, man, I keep hitting that mic, I'm sorry. So in my case, I'm gonna probably set it to 1500 because that's pretty much the lowest I ever wanted to operate my uh, my tractor at. But, uh, so I'm gonna set it to 1500 and then I'm gonna go ahead and, and link the pedals. And so what that's gonna do is as you press your hydrostatic pedals further down, it's automatically gonna kick the RPMs up on the tractor. So kind of like the pedal is on like a, uh, on like a uh, shuttle shift standard gear tractor where you have an actual gas pedal instead of just this stick well now 
you have both options. You can uh, you can do the link pedal, uh, or you can not link the pedal and just use your regular regular stick. So like let's say we're mowing and you need it at 5400 RPMs. Well, then you won't link the pedals. You'll just keep it at 5400 RPMs and uh, not 5400. Well, for your rear, you would be at about 2400 RPMs really. But uh, for for your 540 on your PTO, you could just use the stick and it will constantly stay there. But if you want to link your pedal. Now you can link the pedal when you're not mowing and let's say you're doing loader work or, or you're doing anything where you don't really need a constant RPM always set high. You can set your RPM at a, at a lower idle, let's say 1500, and then as you use your hydrostatic pedals, it's going to give you more RPM uh, to give you the power. So um, that's something I had seen on a couple of the other more expensive tractors and uh, I love the fact that they added that to this hydrostat. Uh, PTO switches the same except they added a neutral feature which again another awesome feature um, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to sell you this tractor but uh, these are a lot of things that I've, I've thought would be really neat and for now that I brought in my other tractor got into this tractor now the fact that they have it uh, I just think it's pretty cool so um, so this again you can do your on and off on your pto but your your pto when it's off you can't twist it by hand it's a hydro it's a hydraulic pto but you, you can't twist it so if you're wanting to hook up something with a pto you basically have to twist your in uh your your equipment uh that you're trying to attach to get the spines lined up on your pto well now you don't have to do that. Now they have a neutral feature for your PTO where you can set your PTO into neutral and now you can turn that PTO by hand. So if you're trying to hook a PTO device or attachment on the back, you don't have to struggle with it uh, to get it lined up perfect. You can just spin that PTO the way you want it and then just slide that attachment on. So that again is really cool. I'm really glad they added that feature. So as you can see, it's just this little yellow bar back and forth, you know, now it's in neutral, now it's in 540. So I really, uh, I really like that feature also. So that's another new feature. Uh, they also changed some of this down here that used to be just an open area where the, uh, where gears or, or levers that your tractor doesn't have, that would be just open and have some grooves down there where those levers, well now they have a, a little cup you know a little not a cup holder but that's kind of like a, a little place for you to hold stuff and the same thing over here so now you have a couple extra little storage compartments uh, to hold things that before would have gotten lost down back below that plastic cover so uh, again another neat feature that uh, that I'm glad they added uh, on this side so um, same thing you got your your uh, parking brake here got your little toolbox uh, holder there I guess I think that's new I don't think I had that before um, same kind of layout up here so those are the main things I can think of uh, I can't see a whole lot of other differences I haven't used it a lot though I'm sure I'm gonna find some other features as you can see it's 6.1 it was 5.9 uh, when I cranked it so I've been sitting here for a little bit, running some hours up, but uh, but yeah, overall, I uh, I really like the improvements. So uh, if you got a 4140 and you're just itching for some of these features, uh, this is it. You know, now from what I understand, they're going to offer the same kind of layout that they did before uh, on the XR series. They had the XR 4140, and then that went in five horsepower increments up to 55 so you had your 40 45 50 55 so uh, on this one they started out with 42 they bumped it up a couple horsepower for the base model so it's going to be uh, you're going to be an MT3 and then you're going to have the 42 the 47 uh, the 52 and the 57 and uh, from my understanding from the dealer the 57 still has a uh, the extra options it's going to be cat 2 it's going to have the extra um, port in the back of course the extra horsepower but there's even some new features they added to uh, to that high-end version of the tractor so um, 
So yeah, so far so good. AC is nice and cold. Uh, we're still pretty hot here in Texas in the hundreds. And uh, man, the AC is is uh, great. I mean, it cools down this cab great. So yeah, so far I'm pretty excited. And I'm uh, going to start using this thing and, and uh, testing out all these features. I'll give another update later when I... Uh, get more of it figured out and uh, I'm able to run the mower and, and run all the attachments that I've used to run before and uh, I can give you another overview of, of how everything's going so uh, so excited so far hopefully this video helps anyone especially if you were interested in this model hopefully it kind of gives you a base understanding I mean you can always of course go to the website and and look at uh, the specs of the tractor but uh, basically I wanted to give you a, a good overview of of what it has and and what it was what the new model is providing you so just just watch did you see that not a bit of hesitation in that bucket I mean there's no hesitation in it when it was going up and on the way down even it's pretty much smooth all the way through very minimal hesitation and that's at 1500 rpms guys we're not talking you know 2000 2500 rpms like recommended to get rid of a floppy bucket syndrome i mean i'm doing this at 1500 rpms that's just basically the minimum of whatever i would operate my tractor on and the minimum that i will operate this tractor on but even before on the last model tractor i had even at 2500 rpms i couldn't get bucket response like that out of my tractor so I don't know what they did. I don't know if it's the smaller hoses. Uh, I don't know if they put a different hydraulic pump. I don't know. But oh my goodness, look at that. It just, there's no slop in it at all. No slop. I just pulled that bucket all the way up with not one bit of slop. On the way down, it still moves down just like it used to do. Watch. Look at that just a slight bit of hesitation that would be what i would expect when coming down off the bucket i mean hats off to you guys whatever y'all did uh on the redesign maybe it was the new loader i don't know what you did but hats off to ls for getting rid of floppy bucket syndrome and again i'm going to use the tractor it's brand new as you can see it's got 6.2 now hours so i don't know if if it's going to show itself or whatever but i had that from the minute I had that tractor um, you know and uh, I, I never was able to get rid of it and now it seems to be almost completely gone they changed up the way these coolers are laid out um, the awesome part about what they did with these coolers is is you no longer have to take panels off or remove things other than just the basic screen that you always have to remove to clean your coolers so before, if, if you had an XR4140 or the XR41 series, you had to actually remove this panel that used to go up and down right here. So that way you could get in and access your radiator to clean it out because you had your radiator, then you had your AC cooler, um, and then you had your two other coolers. So what they did on this model now is they eliminated that panel that you had to get off. This is the radiator and you can get to the radiator from the back pretty much the same way you always could from the engine but now you can get to the front of the radiator by just pulling off the screen and the screen is literally right in front of the radiator and you have room i mean you've got a good amount of room to use a, one of the tools like I'll, I'll do a review on one of the tools that i have that gets in there and cleans them but i mean now you don't have to take anything off so if you're mowing and you uh need to to clean that off you can just take that panel out dust it off and you but you have access to your radiator and everything else individually so you've got your i think this is the hydraulic cooler here uh, i haven't looked at all the specs on it yet where everything is but i think this is the hydraulic cooler uh, which is easy to accept now that was easy to get to before um, and then there used to be out here it was either the i think it was the fuel or the engine oil cooler there was another cooler out here well they they moved that other cooler here between these two um that one may be a little harder to get to but i don't really see that one getting all that clogged up but even if you do you can at least get to it 
one side here and I know it's hard to see in this video but basically what they did is they moved the the coolers far enough away from each other where you can get in there and actually clean them individually uh, so that way you you have access to keep them clean before it was somewhat hard to get in there and actually clean each and every one of those coolers out even if you had like a radiator genie or whatever that tool is that I have that I can get in there and clean those individual coolers so I will uh, again I'll do a video on the tool that lets you get in there and actually clean out um, those individual coolers but this was another big improvement that I saw uh, when we were looking at this at the dealer that um, that's going to be very helpful that's going to be able to make it easy for you to get in there and keep it cleaned out and hopefully access all of your coolers uh, with a tool so that way you can keep them very nice and clean which then uh, keeps you from overheating uh, but all in all I'm pretty hopeful so everybody take care thank you